Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and I just finished Cyberpunk 2077. I know in my previous video where I talked about my initial impressions, I said I would pop back in and speak again about the game once I finished it. So, after I did that video, I started focusing a little more on the Johnny Silverhand quests. Johnny Silverhand is the Keanu Reeves character. I'm a big Keanu Reeves fan. I wanted to see where that story went. So I did some of those quests, and they were pretty fruitful. I feel like you get a pretty good relationship with him in the game. Um, it sheds some more light on things. And it was just interesting to hang out with Keanu Reeves, you know, or Keanu Reeves' character, I guess I should say. <clears throat> um, some of the missions, in general, are samey after a while in terms of finding certain things, uh, killing a certain guy, or you know, getting a certain car, or whatever the little missions are in the game. There's one with these cars that go haywire, and you have to go all over the map and find the cars. They kind of tell you when you're close by one, find it, and then find a way to make them stop and go back to home base and whatever um, to fix the issue with them going haywire. <clears throat> it's fun, there's a lot of personality, but the missions do get kind of humdrum, which was another reason that after I made that previous video, I started focusing on the main story as opposed to doing a ton of side missions. <clears throat> the The main story isn't that long. Um, I think it said I had 26 hours in. That sounds excessive, but I would say maybe 15 of it was the main story. I don't think the main story is that that long, even if it was 20. If you focus just on that and you play it just for that, it's a, a fairly short game for an RPG, which is fine by me. I got um, three of the four endings that I'm able to get. There were some things I missed that would have given me other endings, either saved certain people that I didn't know you could save, or make certain dialogue options that I didn't realize I was making mistakes on. So that kind of annoyed me because, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a secret ending, and if you make a certain dialogue option like halfway through the game, it lets you have the secret secret ending. And I didn't know that, so I had no way to to get it anyway. Like that was it. I, I was kind of locked out of that. So that kind of stunk. Um, the game did crash on me, I think, twice more since I made that initial video, so we're at about five times. Still really fun. I enjoyed it. Again, if you've watched my previous video, Cyberpunk really reminds me of the game Rage. It reminds me of Rage uh, with a little bit of Brink, where you can kind of slide on the ground. I don't know if anyone remembers that game on the 360 and the PS3. Um, some of the, the action and the shooting reminds me of Brink. Uh, lots of you know mini quests and side quests and relationships and they did do very well with the NPCs. I felt like you do feel for them and you get to know them and, and like them or dislike them. So that was pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and overall I really enjoyed it. I say, I, Like I said, I think with the glitches and everything, again, I would probably give the game an 8, 8.5. I really liked it. It's rage with a cyberpunk skin to it. It's a beautiful game. The other thing, speaking of the game looking good, is um, it was very dark. I went into the HDR options and blasted them up to almost full, and it was still really dark. There are certain scenes that are black. I don't know if it's like a black crush issue. I know I have a very low-end television, but it was like so hard to see in certain buildings inside that I had to pause the game and stop and up my brightness. You couldn't see anything. It wasn't even just like, oh, it's a little dark. It was dark. And just to recap it, I was playing on the Xbox one X that my friend Brian, thanks Brian, had given me for free. So <clears throat> I know my buddy had said in the last video, why would you go from an Xbox One to a One X and not get a Series X? Because I didn't pay for it. I always just kind of wanted the mid, the mid uh, gap upgrade. And Brian, my buddy, had gotten the Series X. So he said you could take my One X, and to me, it's a night and day difference. So it was, it's great. Um, I'm going to go back. I'll probably try to get this fourth ending I know I can get and I'm able to get in the game. And what else? Then I'll probably do some of the side missions where you get the haywire cars or help out certain NPCs in the game and you'll get achievements or whatever. And that's about it. Money is kind of hard to come by in the game, I found. There was a glitch to get money, but they patched it before I started playing, so I couldn't do that because I wanted to buy some better cyber 
cyberware and stuff like for my character and in the end I, I didn't get all the ones I wanted because money just doesn't come that easy even if you sell weapons or things you have it just doesn't seem uh, as fruitful as you would have hoped really enjoyed the Keanu Reeves stuff really enjoyed that it's a cyberpunk game kinda had that shadow run feeling to it even though I still prefer the shadow run IP and universe to cyberpunks um, I hope they keep doing stuff with it I hope that whether it be another game or you know whatever there are some things that that reminded me of Johnny Mnemonic that just could be because the story had a sort of slight resemblance to it in some way or because Keanu Reeves is in it again but I enjoyed it I, I think even with the glitches like I said I would do eight eight and a half um, I would recommend it especially if you have the One X or the PS4 Pro and if you have the newer systems like the PS5 or the Series X then I would definitely recommend it it's not like a life-changing game where you play this game and you go, wow, this is different than anything I've ever played. Where The Witcher 3 sort of was, in a way, because I felt like that was so massive and different. Um, I prefer this only because I, I like cyberpunk stuff way more than like medieval stuff. But The Witcher just felt grander in some sense. Um, but it does have that, you know, you're walking around, you come across a side mission and... Now you get sort of taken off the main track and you start doing the side missions and you forget to do the main missions. So that that does share that quality, just like The Witcher 3. Um, yeah, that's it. I liked it a lot. I, I mean, did it get, did it deserve the hate it got? Probably not. I mean, it probably didn't lift up to certain people's expectations because they thought that because The Witcher 3 was such a big deal that this was going to be the next big thing. And it is in a way, but it's also, you know... Just a, a cyberpunk first-person shooter with RPG elements. I enjoyed it, but it's not like uh, be-all, end-all for video games. So let me know, guys, if you liked cyberpunk. Most of the people I've spoken to on my previous video said they enjoyed it. I really liked it. I I, I would play through it again to get the other endings. It's just I don't know if I'll ever do that. It, it's not that long, but I feel like going through the same stuff over and over to get like a slight variation of ending sort of isn't my thing all the time. Though I could see myself in the future like... A year or two from now, maybe starting over, um, it kind of stinks that some of the endings are locked out for me at this point, but I guess that's the way it goes, right? You kind of have to go through the game again, and that's why people like RPGs. So, that's it. There's my two cents. Let me know, guys, if you uh, watched the last video or this video, what you thought of Cyberpunk, if you enjoyed it as much as I did, or if you really hated it. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.